It's, it's you know, you got to get that first win. And it changes everything, changes the week, changes the momentum. Um, to hear them get a chance to, to sing the song in the locker room is good. So, again, it, it creates a lot of positive energy over the week, which we haven't had the last couple of weeks. You just feel that kind of hanging over you. Uh, but I thought our guys, you know, managed this game well. It, it starts really with the defense. The defense set the tone for us in the first half while the offense was trying to get their feet underneath them. Um, you know, and so to hold them to, what, six points at halftime, I think it was, and then allow the offense to go out and, and, and start to get some momentum and play with a two-score lead, um, that's the type of football game we're used to playing. Zach, how much did you work out Joe today? When did you definitively know that he'd be able to go? Uh, he, he did a little bit this morning, you know, and, and really just to take the place of his pregame stuff that he usually does. What, what were the conversations like as you all tried to assess whether he was in I mean, it's always it, – we, we were in a good shape the last couple of days. We, we felt like we knew where this was headed, and, and – um, so we were in a good spot. Zach, uh, Jamar was pretty vocal about saying he wanted to get the ball more. Burrow said he wanted to find a way to get him the ball more. Did it exceed your expectations tonight his performance? Uh, I mean, no, no, because you got a high standard for Jamar. And, you know, we're trying to find as many ways to always get him the ball. That's not anything new. Um, and so, again, he stepped up to the challenge and, and made some big plays for us. How much was Burrow lobbying throughout the week to, to be able to, to be in a good position to play? He, he's a competitor. You make the decision to play Burrow. Did you know when you make that decision that he'd be able to throw the ball 49 times in, in a game like that? Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of RPOs involved in that, you know. So you know, we'll watch and just see how many we call. But there's oftentimes we're calling a run, and he's taking a completion on the run, and usually it's an efficient game for us. So you know, we'll look at how many called passes we actually called. It felt like in a, for a while there we were in too much to get back on tracks, you know, when they were playing dime and. Um, so they, they got a little, there was probably three or four series stretch there that just wasn't going our way. And we couldn't get that first efficient play on first and 10, whether it was run or pass. And that set us back a little bit. They did a good job there. Um, and we we're able to adjust to that in the second half. Zach, can you assess the defense and what it meant for that unit to be able to play with a lead for a change? Out, yeah, no kidding. You know, and that's, that's the whole key. We, tr we tried to start fast. Obviously, we took the ball, um, you know, kind of stalled out there and then missed that field goal. But our defense kept us, kept us right in this thing. And 1-11 and 11 on third downs. Uh, the two interceptions, the how many sacks, five or six sacks, um, that was outstanding. The run defense I thought was outstanding as well, which which you know was understated because it forces them into those situations they got to throw it, and that's where you get the pressure. So I thought Lou did a great job dialing up pressures at the right time that put these guys in a good position, and uh, it was a, that was a great job by our defense today. One of the big plays early, Atwell goes out, I, you know, touchdown at first, gets replayed, yeah, then two yard line, and then uh, DJ gets the big sack. Yeah. How big was that? Moment. Enormous, enormous, and and I'm not sure who who made the play to help him get him out. You know, on the reverse, um, and so you know that that's a big stand right there by our defense. You know, and just not giving up, not being deflated because they thought they scored a touchdown, and then we got to go back out there and the ball's on the three, and then DJ sets the tone right there. So um, just thought our guys played tremendous on defense. You had a couple of motion penalties there early in the game. Yeah. What, oh yeah. What was going on with that? Uh, no, different three different people on three different snaps, you know, and, and we can't have that, um, you know, because then it then it affected our cadence going forward there for a couple of possessions, and they did a good job timing up some of their their plug pressures. So, um, you know, that's something we got to get rectified. We can't have that, and that, that's not been us, right? We've been a really disciplined team, and usually win the win the penalty battle, and um, that that as much as anything, we were a third and one in the first half, and we ended up in third and eleven, you know, and and that's we can't tolerate that. I know you said Joe's a competitor, but was there ever a moment? Well, you just take it. I mean, I'm in here saying day to day because that's what we're doing, you know. And it's um, you just never fully know, and and uh, you know, you just want honest responses from him, which he gave. And you talk to the doctors, and everyone gets on the same page and feels good about it. And he goes out there and delivers a performance like he did. There was a lot of questions about how mobile he could be um, when you decided to call that naked that ended up on that point three. What kind of what led to the decision? That is there something you felt over the course of the game that felt oh, yeah. about that spot? Um, yeah, I mean that that was a discussion that we had. Um, the last couple of days is, is whether we felt comfortable doing it or not. And um, I asked him a couple of plays before, and he, he felt good about it. And so it's really limited. It's it's not much, you know. When you watch that play, it's a quick toss. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the over under on like seven steps he took uh, before he whipped out the bench route to Jamar. So um, he did a great job. He snapped his head around. He was ready for 97 on the edge, and Jamar did a great job coming out of it and selling like he was on the backside of the run. Remember that Joe was playing with what he was playing with. How important was it for the? How important was it for Jamar, just team effort-wise, to kind of pick Joe up? 
There's no doubt, you know, and that's what this team has always been about. And, uh, you know, Joe's toughness, we're just used to it, you know, so you kind of take it for granted at times because he's he's played through a lot of stuff over the last however many years he's been, what, four years? Is it four years? He's played here four years. And uh, so, again, he's – He's always a guy that it's appreciated when your quarterback goes out there and is dealing with something as significant as he was and, and uh, able to battle through it, throw the ball 40-something times. Um, you know, so that was, that was really, you know, escaped a couple pressures too and got the ball out of his hand. So that was big time. Another clutch play by Jamar. I don't know what your view of it was, but the third down reception where he had to reach behind him a little bit, I think it was third and 10, and he got 13 yards. It seemed like a really big play. On yeah. Side. I, I couldn't see very well. I know with the check, you know, Joe checked that play um, and got it to Jamar. And I, I couldn't I couldn't tell where the ball was going, and so it kind of surprised me to see Jamar catch it behind him. Um, I, I don't know what the window looked like, but it was that was certainly a significant play. I think it put us in the red zone. Is that the one you're talking about? And uh, so that was big time. What did you like about the concept of a uh, pistol fake pitch play action default to Jamar? I don't know if we've seen that before. Try not to put your quarterback under center. <laughs> so you got to be creative. Talking about being creative, I mean, trying to find those deep connections. There hasn't been there as much as you probably like this season. How challenging has that been because of everything you guys are dealing with, some of the constraints? Is that a big reason why you haven't been able to get maybe as many of those deep shots in? You know, every game is a little bit different. The, the first week, it was a rain game, and you're playing against, you know, one of the better fronts in football. I think they've shown that over the last three weeks. Um, Baltimore is pretty hell-bent on, on playing as much too safety and helping on top of our receivers as possible. This week is the same thing. They know they got Aaron Donald up front, so they're just going to play as soft as humanly possible to keep everything in front and make it go the length of the field, which, which you can see your defense has got to play well, so it allows you to do that. So the, the biggest thing is for us just to continue to remain patient, be creative, take advantage of the shots when we get them. Um, we may see a lot of that this year with the receivers we got. You know, you've got to get used to that. Are you comfortable with the direction of the offense right now? Do you feel like you guys are where you're close to where you want to be? No, 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 no. I, I, I thought the first half was really poor by all of us, starting with me not getting us in a very good rhythm with the play calls, um, the penalties we mentioned. Um, you know, so there, there was just too much a negative that was going on that's not been about us. I thought in the second half we played really well in offense. You know, we had the turnover. It was an unbelievable pick by Witherspoon. I mean, unbelievable. So I think we went down, maybe we, we scored a touchdown. We had a field goal. We had the turnover on the pick. And then we got into four-minute mode in those 13 runs. We felt that running the two minutes off the clock was more valuable than anything else, given how our defense was playing. So um, first half, really bad. Second half, I thought was really good. Um, you know, we, we were able to move the ball quite a bit. You took the ball on the coin toss. You took the ball. Yeah. To try to play with the lead. You know, we haven't done it all season. We've been down two scores in both the games we we lost so far. And so just, again, felt felt um, like we wanted to, to try to attack them early on and put some points on the board. And um, usually our defense, when they got a lead, they, they play pretty well. And unfortunately, we weren't able to get points on the board on that first drive. I know it's so early in the season, but do you feel like this was a win y'all needed to have, but still confidence that you can get to where you want to go? Yeah, I think, you know, you don't want to look at 0-3. That's that's a tough spot to be in, even even though you know we're confident we can get out of anything um, and get on get on a tear and win a lot of games. That's the confidence we have, but um, it is important, you know, especially with a short week coming up, and you just want to <laughs> the the crowd that we have in these home games. Um, I mean, I think we're six and zero when the lights come on. You know, over the last four years when we play here, I I, I could be wrong. I know that Raiders game I think was a four thirty game the first year maybe in the playoffs, but. Um, I just know the feeling I got whenever the lights are on and our, our fans are here in the stadium. It is really loud. It causes a lot of problems. They they almost called timeout several times with one second. I'm watching over there. So, um, you know, even when they don't feel there was a false start or a delay, anything like that, our, our crowd makes a huge impact in these home games and especially these night games. And that was really cool to see all the fans turn out. And um, it was a great night for them, I hope. Jones Jones known as a pretty even keeled guy. What did it say about him today to not only deal with that injury, but especially after the yeah, I think that's the key. You know, at halftime, everybody's got to respond the right way and not be, get frustrated because it's an easy thing to get frustrated when you have, what, six points at half, I think it was. And, and really just we hadn't been in much rhythm. And uh, everybody was responsible for that. And I, I think you, you can see a lot about this team with how they respond in the second half. Defense got a lot of turnovers and sacks in the second half. Offense moved the ball, ate up the time of possession, got points on the board. Um, special teams stepped up big with some punt returns and some field goals. So um, I, I thought all in all, the second half was a complete team effort, and that's what we want to see. I know it's only the, the third time y'all played them, but this is the first time you beat the Rams personally. Does this mean that you play again? We beat them in the preseason game last year, week one. 
that's like our only preseason win in four years or five years. So, um, no, there, there's no significance to it. You know, you, you play a lot of friends, you play a lot of former coworkers, you play a lot of family in this league, and um, you know, it, it, it maybe or maybe doesn't get made a lot of, but it's it's nothing significant to us.